love you, God. Just tell him how much you love him this morning. You are such a good God. We love you, Father. We love you, Lord. You are our Savior. We give you all the praise and glory. In Jesus' name, everybody said amen. 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 Let's worship. We're going to raise a hallelujah this morning in his sanctuary. He is worthy to be praised today. And so whatever you're going through, I would just say, just give it to God this morning and worship him the way that he should be worshiped in spirit and in truth today.
Father, we worship you this morning, and we thank you. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Thank you for your son, Jesus. Thank you, Lord, that salvation has come to us through your son. We praise you for it. We thank you for it. Father, thank you for the Holy Spirit that indwells each and every believer. We thank you. We give you worship and praise in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Praise God. Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. May be seated. Praise God. Praise God. Hallelujah. You know, with God, nothing is impossible. Amen. Right? Amen. You know, don't you know that Satan thought that he had won when he had infiltrated the twelve and got Judas to agree with him and not with God? And then on that night that Jesus was betrayed, <coughs> don't you know the devil was shouting? He said, I got him now. And then Peter goes into the flesh and starts cutting off ears, aiming for the throat and missed and got an ear. Right? Mm -hmm. But we know this, that when Jesus gave himself, See, he, he wasn't surprised. He wasn't surprised when this happened in the garden. He wasn't surprised when they surrounded him. He wasn't surprised when he was arrested. Because, see, he already spent time in prayer. He was already in the garden. The Holy Spirit had already ministered unto him and had told him what was about to happen. And he said, is there any other way? And the Father said, no, son. This is the way. And he said, then your will be done. Right? right? And that's how we are. His will be done in our life. In Jesus' name. Amen? Amen. Well, on the night that Jesus was betrayed, he took the bread. <coughs> well, he took the bread. If you can get it out. There we go. On the night that Jesus was betrayed, he took the bread and he lifted it and he blessed it. And he said, this is my body given unto you. He said, as often as you eat this bread, you do so in remembrance of me. Let's eat the bread. Then after they ate the bread, he lifted the cup and he said, this is the cup of the new covenant of my blood. He said, as often as you drink this cup, you do so in remembrance of me. Let's drink the cup. And after they ate the bread and they drank the cup, he said, this is the new covenant given unto you. He said, as often as you do this, you do so in remembrance of me. Father, we remember you. We remember what your son did. We remember that he rose from the dead on the third day because we believe that he is Lord and we believe that you raised him from the dead, <coughs> then we also have been resurrected and are saved. In Thank Jesus' you. name, amen. 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 Praise amen. God. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise Pastor. God. All right. Thank you so much, Pastor Jeff. So just to
two, three, four, 100%. Yeah, we have a couple of men missing. <laughs> yeah, that's all right. All right. <laughs> That's right. Anthony, you want to tell us a little bit about yesterday? Carol, yeah, we, uh, Carol, get ready. <laughs> <laughs> I've been thinking about this. It's Saturday at 9 a.m. I don't know about you, but getting out of bed, you know, I, I look at it. We got there. We we took care of what needed to be taken care of. And really, if you want, if you need the fellowship of men, we're going to be there right. for you. So that's what I want to say. We'll be there, um, and it'll be, we will be there for you. Praise God. Thank you, Anthony. Let's give him a hand. All He does a great job. All right, yesterday we met Carol. You want to tell us a little bit about yesterday? Uh, yesterday we had a good turnout for our ladies. We wish there was more there, but maybe next time. And so we just had a great time in the Lord, and we enjoyed everybody being there. Amen. Amen. All right. Especially Our, the Lord. Especially the Lord. That's right. So the women meet on March 5th at Rodrigo's. We meet a little later at 11 a.m. Um, because we like to eat lunch. <laughs> the guys like to eat breakfast, but we like to eat lunch. And so anyway, just uh, make plans to be there. You know, iron sharpens iron. And when we're together, we get sharpened, and the Holy Spirit brings out things. Yesterday, we talked about fear and how we can overcome fear, and we talked about things in our lives that, that uh, we need to overcome. And you know what? It just brings you closer together and uh, helps you be a better Christian and get closer to God. How many of you want to get closer to God? Amen. 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 That's, that's our motive, right? And so anyway, I just want to encourage you to do that. All right, a couple of other announcements. Uh, the 21-day fast, January 23rd through February 12th, whatever it is that you're fasting, uh, it ends next Saturday. And I just want to encourage you to continue to do that. And the next announcement is next Sunday is game day. Chargers. I'm sorry, Anthony, that your Bills didn't win. But they played a great game. Did y'all see the Bills and the Chiefs game? If you haven't, you gotta go back and watch that game. Some of the best football I've ever seen. I'm not and I'm not exaggerating. But anyway, so we got the uh, Cincinnati Bengals and the LA Rams. I vote for the LA Rams. Who do y'all vote for? Okay, LA Rams. Who's voting for the Bengals? Anybody? You're always against the flow. <laughs> uh, anybody, you're voting for the Bengals? Well, anyway, we're going to have a great time uh, next Sunday. Wear your favorite football jersey. I'm just going to let y'all know right now, I'm wearing a Dallas Cowboy uh. jersey. If you don't like the Cowboys, then that's fine. But uh, wear your favorite uh, uh, football jersey. And we're going to have, after, after church at 3 p.m. at my house, we are going to have a chili cook-off and a salsa throw-down. All right, so who's making chili? For, okay, one, two, three, four, five. Kimberly's making chili. <laughs> I'm not making my own chili. Are you making chili? I am. I'm gonna make my own chili. All right. So we got some chili. Who's gonna make salsa? Anybody good at salsa? I'm not good at salsa. Anybody? All right, well, we may be lacking in the salsa area, but uh, anyway, just bring the, bring the chili and the salsa next week, and the game, I want to let you know, starts at 3.30, and so we want to, I just, if you like to be there for the kickoff, I'm one of those kickoff people. I like to be there at the beginning of the game. So anyway, anyway, so next week, we have the uh, Bengals, you know, that's just hard to say. The Bengals versus the Rams, and so it should be an exciting game, right? Rams all the way. Rams all the way. That's, that's, right. that's who I'm going for. All right. All right, and so I just want to let you know that the leadership meeting is a training meeting this month, and it's going to be February 19th, 9 a.m. to 1.30 p.m. at Faith Life Center. Please let me know, yay or nay, because I need to know who's coming and who's not coming. Uh, because if you don't get training during this time, then you're going to have to have training another time. And it's just, you know, when do you guys like doing your ministry? Does everybody like doing your ministry? Yeah, and so we have to put into it, and we have to make our
ourselves better. And as we make ourselves better and we go to training and we learn and we go to our leadership meetings that I have once a month, because there will be one in March, it just makes us better. Amen? And so, so your, your ministry is what you put into it, just like your relationship with God, Amen. just like your job, just like everything else that we do, right? And so I just want to encourage you, let me know about the leadership meeting February 19th. And is that all of the announcements, or is there one more? Please silence your cell phone. Thank you, Lisa. That's a good one. So anyway, yeah, put your cell phone on silent. That's great. We love you. But still, put your cell phone on silent. We still love you, but silence your cell phone. <laughs> anyway, let's uh, thank the Lord. We thank you, thank Lord. You, we give you praise. We give you glory. We give you honor, God, as we come into your presence. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 All right. Well, it's time for tithes. And offering, Chapel Ross, come on up here with us. So uh, the Lord has put on my heart uh, that we're going to do things a little bit differently for tithes and offerings. And we want to include building fund in that. And so if you want to give to the building fund, make sure you designate on your envelope building fund. How many of you know we're believing for a building? Man, All right, man. so we got to keep it before us. Believe for that building. Stand in the gap for that building and also give towards that building. Amen, amen. And you know, we serve a supernatural God. Amen. Okay, we serve a supernatural God. Amen. And you know, if we looked at, you know, the money that we have in this room, we'd go, well, that, we're probably going to fall a little short. But we serve a supernatural God. And as we give into the building fund, as we give into tithes and offerings, then we will see supernatural growth and supernatural favor in times where we need it, right? But we got to, you know, you got to step into the water. You know, to get saved, you have to confess first that you believe that Jesus is Lord. You got to do something, right? Uh, faith precedes it. I, I love Hebrews 11.6, where it says, without faith, it's impossible to please God. Is that not one of your favorite uh, verses? Without faith... It's impossible to please God. And the good news is, is that every time you tithe, that's faith. Right. Because how many of you have actually seen God? Yeah, I know you've seen the works of God. I know you. God has proven himself to you. But have you seen God? Have you seen Jesus? Have you seen the Holy Spirit? Literally? I haven't. By faith, I believe. That's right. And by faith, I give. And be, when I do that, I'm pleasing God. Amen. Is there anyone else I'd rather please than God? No. No. Even you, Pastor Brenda, I'm going to please God, then you. That's good. Amen? Amen. I got my priorities straight. Good job. So praise God. And when we do that, when we please our supernatural God, supernatural things happen back. And what else does that say? Am I taking up all the time? No, you're fine. Okay. It also says, you know, without faith it's impossible to please God. Are y'all looking this up? Have y'all seen this? You must approach him. You must believe that he is when you approach him. But doesn't that make sense? How can I approach something I don't believe in? How many people go to church that don't really believe in God? Oh, I would say a lot. A lot, well, right? Yeah, I would. I, I, I'll be honest, and, and, and I, I'll say it this way. I'll say it to where it doesn't sound mean. I tithe because I believe. I wouldn't tithe if I didn't. Right, amen. I may go to church and not believe. Right. Because it's, you know, nice people, something to do. I feel better about myself. The preacher says something, makes me feel good, right? But I've met a lot of people that have been in church that don't really believe God. They just enjoy coming. They think it's the right thing to do. But see, I approach God because I believe he exists. Amen. And in my giving, I believe he exists. Amen. And in my tithing, I believe he exists. Amen. And I know that he's going to bring back. Because it says not only that, it says you must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder. Of those who diligently seek him. Are you diligent? Listen, this is the word of God. I'm not making this up. Faith pleases God. I give my tithe is faith pleasing God because I believe he exists. And then he does what? Rewards us. Praise the Lord. Amen. You want to say something? I do. All right. So there's three ways you can give. 
You can give in person. You can give on our website, www.theword.us, and you can text to give. And I can't see the number. Yell it at me, Lisa. 650 2297 2290. 650 2297. Oh, 2250. Yay! Yay. <laughs> anyway, so text to give, uh, website, and then in person. All right, so if you got your envelopes ready, let's stand. Yes. Let's go to before the Lord, and we are going to start. The Lord put this on my heart this morning. Amen. To start making declarations over our tithes, offerings, and building, building funds. funds. How many of you are believing for God to open the windows of heaven yes. as you tithe yes. and give offerings and for things to happen? Hallelujah. We all are, right? And so we're going to decree and declare those today in Jesus' name. So we say it with you? Yes, say it with me. Uh -huh. Because As we are tithers, the, the windows, windows of heaven are open and, and the blessing is pouring out. out. We, because we are sowers, we are furnished in abundance for every good work. We receive our perfect assignment with raises and bonuses, contracts, benefits, sales, and commissions. We receive settlements, estate, inheritance, interest, and income, rebates, and returns. Checks in the mail, supernatural wealth transfer. Scholarships, tuitions paid in full, bills paid off, debts demolished, royalties received, and properties acquired. We are getting our buildings, our land, our houses, our vehicles, our equipment, and our airplanes. God is bringing into our hands seed, even seed so big, it's beyond what you can think or imagine. We command our abundant harvest to come. Abundant harvest, come to us now. Harvesting angels, go get it. Bring it to us right now. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Are you ready to give? Let's pray over the offer. Amen. Father, we just thank you. We declare in the name of Jesus that as we give by faith, supernaturally, the rewarder, who is you, will bring back a harvest in Jesus' name. Blessing upon the gift. Amen. 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 Praise God. Amen. You can be seen in my Bible. I life. certainly can. Gracias, Anthony. Thank you. Praise God. Yes. It's upside down, but it's okay. It's upside down. This is Great. Praise the Lord. Amen. All right. Did everybody bring your Bible today? Yes. Yeah. Wave it at me. Let me see it. Yeah, maybe on your phone or your tablet. Or you may have a real Bible that you open up. I like a real Bible that I can open up and I can read. I'm a visual person, so I really like that. But uh, there's, we're so blessed that there's so many ways that we can receive the Word and receive the Bible. We're so blessed that... Uh, uh, God speaks to us through his word and that we have so many opportunities now to hear the word of God, right? You can go on your smartphone, you can pull stuff up, you can pull our app up and hear the word of God. You can pull up anybody that you want to listen to today, you can hear the word of God. You can go on television and hear the word of God. So there's no excuse not to hear the word of God. And, and we need the word each and every day in our lives. Can you say amen? Amen. amen. Let's pray. Father, we just come to you as we uh, listen to the word. That the word is planted in our hearts, God. And we receive it today. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Well, look in your Bibles. Romans chapter 12, verses 1 and 2. I urge you, brothers, in view of God's mercy, to offer your bodies as living sacrifices, holy and pleasing to God. This is your spiritual act of worship. Do not conform. Everybody say that with me. Do not conform any longer to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you'll be able to test and approve what God's will is, his good, pleasing, and perfect will. 
So our spiritual act of worship is to present ourselves to God to be holy by living the life that he instructs us to live. 1 Peter 2.24 says he himself bore our sins in his body on a tree so we might die to sin and live for righteousness. And 1 Peter 1.16 tells us be holy because I am holy. Did you know that you're holy? Amen. You're holy because God has declared that you are holy. A lot of Christians have issue with that. They think they're not holy. Why? Because they dabble in a little bit of sin, dabble in a little bit of holiness, and they can't let go of the sin, and then they don't feel holy. Or they have been taught that no one is holy, and that you can never be holy, and that you can never go into the presence of God. I want to tell you right now that none of that is Bible. Amen? Because God says you are holy in 1 Peter. Be holy because I am holy. And so it's a matter of sin consciousness and righteousness consciousness. And we want to have righteousness consciousness. That means that you can go boldly to the throne of grace. You know why sin is so bad? It's because it separates you from God. It keeps you from having a relationship with God. That's why God hates sin. Because he wants a relationship with you. He's not trying to control your life. He's not trying to say, don't do this, don't do this, don't do this. And, and because you won't be worthy enough to come into my presence. That's not what God is saying. He's saying, remove this stuff from your life so you can come into my presence and so you can feel and stand and experience the full manifestation of God in your life. Amen? So when you're in sin, you're not going to want to come into the presence of the Lord. Why? Just like Adam and Eve, because you have something to hide. And so we don't want to be like that. We have nothing to hide. We confess our sins. That's what James tells us. Confess your sins one to another, right? And we confess our sins. Why? So we can go boldly into the throne of grace and make our, uh, make our petitions known. Now, I don't know about you, but I don't have any room in my life to not be in the presence of God. In other words, I don't need anything that the world may have to offer that's going to keep me from God's presence. Right? I need God in my life every single day. I'm standing on the word just like you. I need some breakthroughs. Anybody here need a breakthrough? Yeah. We need some breakthroughs in our lives. And to do that, we got to be able to go boldly to the throne of God. So that means sometimes we have to get stuff out of our life. And so how do we live a righteous and holy life? What I love about God is that he doesn't just tell us what to do without telling us how to do it. In Romans chapter 12, it tells us exactly how to be righteous and holy. It tells us to offer our bodies as living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God. This is our spiritual act of worship. Do not conform any longer to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. So when we conform to the world, then we're like the world. That's what conform means. When we conform, when we're like the world, and we speak like the world, and we act like the world, then we're not really holy. We're acting like the world. Amen? Right. If we think like the world thinks, we're going to speak like the world speaks. Amen? And that's why it's so important what we meditate on. And so just like that, Romans 12 tells us to be transformed by the renewing of our minds. When we allow ourselves to be transformed, we become like God, then we begin to say things like God says and do things like God does. So we have all these old voices in our head from when we were a kid or we were born again. You have these old voices in your head and sometimes... They play out and give out these old messages. We have to renew our minds to the word of God every single day so that we can be what? <coughs> Transformed. Listen, it's just like this. The devil never quits. That's right. He's going to throw stuff at you over and over, remind you of your past, 
remind you of your failures, remind you of your screw-ups, remind you of all of these things, unless you remind him each and every day who you are in Christ Jesus. And a great scripture is uh, 1 Peter 1.16. When you stand up in the morning, you can say, be holy because I am holy. And you can tell the devil, God has called me holy. Therefore, I live a holy life in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. And so we're holy. Amen. Amen. And so when we start speaking God's words instead of our own words, we begin to think like God. Now, that statement right there uh, puts a lot of people off because they don't think that you can think like God. But let me just tell you, we are to change our minds and think like God and not yes. think like the world. That's and right. this is what God thinks That's right nice. here. Amen? His yes. word. And when we speak his word and read his word and get into his word then we're going to be then we're going to renew our mind change what we say and we're beginning to speak and think like god amen, amen. with amen. god nothing is impossible right. all things are possible with the lord right and we begin to understand we get a bad word about our health we don't receive it why because we know that we're healed right. we know that we're holy we know that we're righteous we know that we're the children of God. We know we can go boldly to the throne. We know that we can stand at nothing. And I say it again, nothing, nothing comes between us and our relationship with God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Amen? Amen. And so we push forward. We push past the barriers. We push past the entanglements and the snares that try to trap us and get us in a place where we can't receive from God. Yeah. You see why the devil loves sin so much? It's to separate you from God. That's what it's all about, to separate us from God. So we'll feel unworthy, like we can't go before his presence. So we have to protect that in everything that we have, and part of that is renewing our minds each and every day. All right, so there's no shortcuts. Amen? Amen? If there's a shortcut, I'd let you know about it, but there's not. It takes time to read God's word and pray. And when we take the time to get into the word of God, we're learning about who God is and who Jesus is. If you look in your Bibles in John chapter 1, it says, In the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. I love that. He was with God in the beginning. Who? Jesus. That's who it's talking about. Through him all things were made. Without him nothing was made that has been made. In him was life, and that life was the light of men. The light shines in the darkness, but the darkness has not understood it. And then if you look down in verse 14, it says, The word became flesh and dwelt among us. That's talking about Jesus. Amen. Jesus is the word. Amen. You wanted more Jesus in your life than get into the word. Every time you get into the word, you... You, you are understanding Jesus a little bit better. Amen. So when we study the word, we're studying Jesus, and we're allowing to transfer our transform our minds. Did you know that you cannot think two thoughts at once? Try it right now. You can't. You can only think of one thought at a time. Amen? Thank God. Now we can multitask. We can pretend like we're thinking about two things at once, but we're really not. Our brains are designed to only think one thought at a time. <coughs> we cannot think two thoughts at once. So when you're transforming your mind, you're replacing an old thought with a new thought. And God has a lot to say about your mind. Did you know that? So he knows that once you make a decision, you'll follow through. James chapter 1 <laughs> tells us, to be double-minded is unstable, and we shouldn't expect to receive anything from God. And so when you're waffling, and that's what Jay says, when you're going back and forth, so you're getting into, getting into fear, but then you're going back to faith, but then you go back to fear, and then you go back to faith, and you're going back and forth, which, by the way, is exhausting, right? Especially if you're doing it in your head. 
then you're double-minded. You should not expect to receive anything from God. So you have to make up your mind. You're going to push fear away in the name of Jesus and stand in faith. Amen? And we stand in faith. How do we do that? We speak faith. Sometimes it takes faith to speak faith. You know what I mean? You know what I'm talking about? Sometimes you just got to speak faith by faith. Okay, I, the word says I am healed even though my body doesn't feel healed, even though the doctors say I'm not going to make it, even though I got a bad report, the word says I am healed. Therefore, we have to speak healing. We have to speak faith over our bodies and our minds. Amen? Amen. But don't wait. Don't wait until something like that happens in your life. A lot of Christians wait until a big crisis happens in their life. Then all of a sudden they're going to stand in the Word, which is great. But stand in the Word now. Prepare your spirit now. For when the day of battle comes, then you're going to be ready and be able to stand and stand against it. Amen? Amen. 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 And so prepare yourself like a good soldier, like the army of God that we are. We prepare ourselves. If you look in 1 Peter 1.13, it says, prepare your mind for action. Be self-controlled. Set your hope fully on the grace to be given you when Christ is revealed. As obedient children, do not conform to the evil desires you had when you lived in ignorance, but just as he who called you is holy, so be holy in all you do. For it is written, be holy because I am holy. And so we can be holy if we prepare our minds and use self-control, changing our thoughts to think like God instead of the world. Amen. I don't want to think like the world. If you turn on the news, they tell you you're going to die. Literally. They're telling you you're going to get COVID and you're going to die. Personally, I don't need that. I got other stuff in my life that I'm combating. I don't need somebody, some stranger on the television telling me that. Amen? Amen. 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 <coughs> I don't need what the world has to offer. I don't need what they're saying. I don't need, they have no wisdom. Are you hearing me? They have no wisdom. Who has wisdom? James chapter 1 tells us, if any person needs wisdom, let them ask of the Lord, and the Lord will do what? He will give it to them liberally. God is not holding, withholding wisdom from you. God is not withholding wisdom from me. If we go before the Lord and ask him, he'll download that wisdom into our hearts. And so trust the spirit that's in you. Are you born again? Yes. yes. Some of you are, some of you are. I got to hear it again. Are you born again? Yes. Yes, I believe you now. Then that means you have the spirit of God living on the inside of you. That means the spirit of God speaks to your spirit. Because he speaks to us spirit to spirit and we speak to him spirit to spirit. So if the spirit of God is living on the inside of you, then trust the spirit in you. That's right. Amen. That's right. If your eyes say everything is right, but your spirit says everything is wrong, trust the spirit in you. If your eyes say everything is wrong, but your spirit says everything's okay, trust the spirit in you. That's right. I cannot tell you how many times that uh, message has impacted my life. Especially when people come and boldly lie to you and, and uh, say things that are not true and just all sorts of things. Yeah. Listen, in case y'all haven't noticed, people are a little crazy. <laughs> Have y'all noticed that? Yeah. If, you, if you don't know that, take a drive on the 91 and you'll find out real quick, right? People are a little crazy and they'll lie to you and they'll tell you things and they're not honest because they're not walking 
in the power of the Holy Spirit. But you are walking in the power of the Holy Spirit. We are living in these last days. We have to be the kind of sheep that hears his voice. So when he speaks to you, do not turn left, do not turn right, but go straight. Then we are the people that hear his voice. Amen. So trust the Spirit that's in you. Praise God. And prepare your mind and use self-control to change your thoughts, to think like God instead of the world. Renewing our minds takes action so that we can change and transform ourselves, transform ourselves into the image of God. We have the power to transform. It's up to us. So how can I say this? I'll say it like this. Jesus sent his uh, God sent his son Jesus. Jesus came to earth. Jesus died for our sins. Jesus sits at the right hand of the Father. And everything that the Lord came to do for us is finished. Right. It's done. Amen. It's a done deal. Yes. Amen? Amen? So everything, what does that mean? Your salvation, it's a done deal. Amen. Your healing, it's a done deal. Amen? Amen. Reconciliation, it's a done deal. Right. Your finances, it's a done deal. Everything that you need to live this life, that's what uh, 2 Peter says, 2 Peter chapter 1, that he has given us everything that we need for life and godliness through our knowledge of him. He's given us his divine power. Amen. So it's a done deal. So when we get into the word and we renew our minds, then we're not thinking like the world anymore. We begin to think like God. Right. We begin to change our perspective. We begin to change our outlook. And instead of seeing it through the eyes of the world, we begin to see the world through the eyes of God. And we know that nothing that comes against us shall prosper in Jesus' name. Does that make sense to the world? No, but it makes sense to my spirit. Why? Because my spirit is connected to his spirit. Amen? So, yes, there's stuff that I do that looks like foolishness to the world. I don't care. I don't. Neither should you. I don't care. But I'm going to walk in hell. I'm going to walk in divine hell. I'm going to walk in prosperity. I'm going to walk in reconciliation. I'm going to walk in love and mercy and grace. Nothing missing. Nothing broken. I can walk in peace in the midst of all the chaos that's happening around us. I can walk in peace through the storm because I know in whom I know who lives on the inside of me. Praise God. And I know that I can have nothing missing, nothing broken in my life. Y'all receive that today? If you receive it, wave your hands at me. Say, amen, I receive it. We receive it. So renewing our mind takes action so we can change and transform ourselves into the image of God. And we have the power to, we have the power to transform. So if we renew our minds with the word of God, it gives us the power to transform our lives. Romans chapter 8, if you look in your Bibles, verses 5 through 11, it says, But those who live according to their flesh have set their minds on what the flesh desires. But those who live in accordance with the Spirit have their minds set on what the Spirit desires. So the mind is governed by the flesh is death, but the mind governed by the Spirit is life and peace. So the mind government, governed by the flesh is hostile to God because it does not submit to God's law, <coughs> Excuse me. nor can it do so. But those that are in the realm of the flesh cannot please God. We, however, say me, are not in the realm of the flesh, but we're in the realm of the spirit. And if indeed the spirit of God lives in you, if anyone does not have the spirit of Christ, they do not belong to Christ. But if Christ is in you, even though your body is subject to death because of sin, the spirit gives life because of righteousness. And the spirit of him 
who raised Jesus from the dead, is living in you. He who raised Christ from the dead will also give life to your mortal body because his spirit lives in you. Say it with me. The spirit of God lives in me. The spirit of God lives in you. Amen. So we have the same spirit as Jesus living on the inside of us. If we have the same spirit, which is the Holy Spirit, then the Holy Spirit will guide our spirits into living godly and holy life. So as Christians, we're not to be led by our flesh. We are not to be moved by what our flesh thinks. We want to be led by the Spirit of God. And in order to do this, we have to overcome our minds and change our thinking. Galatians 6, 7 says, Do not be deceived. God is not mocked. A man reaps what he sows. Whoever sows to please their flesh, from the flesh they will reap destruction. Whoever sows to please the Spirit, the Spirit will reap eternal life. So we determine our own happiness or misery based upon the seeds that we sow. So our thoughts can be seeds, and they're watered by our words, both positive and negative. So it's like this. We cannot blame other people for where we are in our lives. That's right. That's right. Okay, don't shout me down when I'm preaching good. <laughs> right? We can't. We are a product right now but of our own words and the seeds that we have sown. Can you say amen? Yeah, amen. So we, have, we cannot blame other people. We have to take responsibility for our thoughts, our words, and actions. And if we do not like what we see, we have the power to change the circumstances by what we speak and speak God's word. So no matter what you've been taught in the past, the seeds that you sow make you responsible for your success or for your failure, for your prosperity or your poverty, your victory or your defeat. So the battleground for all of this is in our minds. That's why we have to be diligent about what we think. Philippians 4, 8 says, Finally, brothers and sisters, whatever is true, whatever is noble, Whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, if anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think about such things. So a single thought that you dwell on and allow to drop in your spirit could change your destiny, good or bad. When we renew our minds by reading and meditating on the word, then our thoughts are controlled by the spirit of God. But if we meditate on how bad the circumstances are, then that's what's going to drop into our spirits. And then suddenly we're not being led by the Spirit of God anymore. We're being led by what we think. And that's how the spirit of depression comes on Christians. When you meditate over and over what is wrong, and you can't see anything good, and the glass is always half empty instead of half full, and you don't think that God is on your side. And you don't think that anyone loves you. And you think that all is lost and you lose hope. Then the spirit of depression comes in. And eventually, if the spirit of depression is not dealt with, then eventually the spirit of suicide will come in. And a person that commits suicide has lost all hope. But the word says that we are not a people who have no hope. That's right. We are a people who have hope. Amen. That earnest expectation of knowing that God is moving in our circumstances even when we can't see it. Right. He's moving. Remember that song? Even when I can't see it, he's moving. Even when I can't feel it, he's moving. Even when I don't know it, he's moving. Why? Because our hope we hope against hope. We hope in knowing that God, our Father, who loves us yes. so much, is going to make a way for us where there seems to be no way. He's going to part the Red Sea. Yes. He's going to go before us. I don't care how lost it seems. I don't care how far gone it seems. Nothing is too far gone for God because all things are possible in Christ Jesus. Amen? And if you stand on that hope and you stand on that rock, in spite of what the world is saying around you, you will overcome and get the victory. Amen? 
the very st first step of a breakthrough happens with you. It's got to break through in you before it can break through physically. Amen. Amen. It's got to break through in your spirit. It's got to manifest in your spirit. It's got to come out your mouth. You got to speak it over and over and over and over and declare that breakthrough in the name of Jesus. And as you speak it over and over and over and over, what you're doing is you're pulling from the supernatural and you're pulling it into the natural by the power of your word. And you're declaring God's word over the situation. You will receive your breakthrough. I call my family saved in Jesus' name. Amen. I call my family serving God. In the name of Jesus, putting God first. I'm calling those things that aren't as though they were because I need some breakthroughs in my life. And so since I got that breakthrough, that revelation, I might as well just praise God now for the breakthrough because I know that it's just a matter of time before it manifests. Amen. But the battle is right here. And that's why I talk about the mind so much, because that's the battleground. That's where the devil comes to try to defeat you and get you down and cut you down. But I'm telling you, if you get in the word, you pick up your sword. That's what Ephesians calls the word in, chap in, in uh, chapter 6. It says it's the word of God. It's our sword. And you pick up that word and you begin to speak it out loud. And you begin to decree and declare over your family, over your finances, over your body. Whatever it is that you need, you will have the victory. Amen. If it works for me, it works for you. Why? Because God is no respecter of persons, but he does respect his word. You speak the word. You get what you say. Amen? Amen. 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 Praise Amen. God. And so, we think on what's lovely, if anything's admirable, if anything's excellent or praiseworthy, think on those things. We renew our minds by reading and meditating on the word, and our thoughts are controlled by the Spirit of God. We're not led by the flesh. We're led by the Spirit. Proverbs 23, 7, for as he thinks in his heart, so is he. So you are what you think you are. 2 Corinthians 10, 5 tells us to cast down imaginations and every high thing that exhausts itself against the knowledge of God, bring into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. In other words, don't have runaway thoughts. Amen? Your runaway thoughts, you've got to take those things captive. Amen. And think on what's good. Amen. Think on what's lovely. Think on what God says, not what the devil says. Amen. Amen. And so we take every thought that does not line up with the word of God, we capture it, and we capture those thoughts and don't allow it to continue in our minds so that we can have the mind of Christ, the mind of the anointed one and his anointing. That means that God's thoughts can be our thoughts if we allow our minds to be renewed by the word and let the spirit of God lead us. No longer can we use the excuse. Listen, we can't. Don't use the excuse. Well, I can't help what I think. Yes, you can. Amen? Yes. Because we can. And you'll never be able to conquer your flesh until you conquer your mind. And you'll never be able to conquer your mind until you learn to renew it every day, every single day. And we have to apply the scripture to ourselves. And then something miraculous happens. No longer do we act like our old selves, but we begin to act like God, speak like God, think like God, declare like God, and we begin to see things happen, miracles, signs, and wonders. How many of you want some miracles, signs, and wonders? Yeah. Then you got to begin to speak and think and talk and act like God. Amen? Amen? And as we do that, we'll begin to see the, the uh, manifestation of the Holy Spirit in our lives. Praise Amen. God. Did you know the Israelites limited God? In Numbers chapter 13, it tells us that the Israelites sent spies out 
Y'all remember that? They went and, uh, and then they came back and reported uh, to Moses. He had sent them to, to Canaan. He told them to go up to the hill country and see what the land is like and come back and give him a report. And so they went and went and they cut off a branch bearing a single cluster of grapes and two of them carried on a pole between them and, and uh, it was fruitful. And at the end of 40 days, when they returned from exploring the land, they came back to Moses and Aaron and the whole Israelite community and they reported to them and the whole assembly and showed them the fruit of the land. And then they gave Moses this account. We went into the land which you sent us, and it does flow with milk and honey, and here is its fruit. But the people who live there are powerful and are big. And uh, um, uh, their descendants of Anak there, and they were giants. And so their cities are fortified and very large. The Amalekites live there. The Negev, the Hittites, the Jebusites, the Amorites, they live in the hill country. And the Canaanites live near the sea along the Jordan. Then Caleb spoke up and he silenced them. And he said before Moses, we should go up and take possession of our land for we can certainly do it. You got to love Caleb, right? But the men who've gone up with him said, we can't attack those people. They're stronger than we are. Have you ever heard people say, well, you need to use wisdom when you're trying to do something in, in the power of God? And they'll say, well, we need to use some wisdom. I'm going to tell you something. When God tells you something, that is wisdom. Amen? When he's telling you to go forward, when he's telling you to push on, even though everyone is telling you not to do it, that is the wisdom of the Lord. Amen? And if he doesn't want you to do it, he'll tell you not to do it. Praise God. And so people will say that, and it's what these people are saying. Well, we need to use the wisdom of the Lord. And they spread among the Israelites a bad report, and they said, the land we explore devours those living in it, and the people we saw are of great size. We saw the Nephilim there, the descendants of Anak. Those are the giants. And then here's, here's what they said. We seem like grasshoppers in our own eyes, and we look the same to them. Grasshoppers. Do you think you look like a grasshopper? You know, God provided everything for the children of Israel when they left Egypt. God performed miracles and signs and wonders. He gave them the promised land, and yet they still limited God. And the word limit is defined as creating restrictions. Where did the Israelites limit God? They limited God in their minds and in their thoughts, and they made a decision that God could not bring them into the promised land, even though God had brought them through 40 years in the wilderness. The children of Israel could not get past the fear to realize that God had a plan to bring them to the promise. And so they're in their own eyes, they were grasshoppers. And they could not measure up to the giants. Psalm 78, 40 says, Oh, how often they rebelled against him in those desert years and grieved his heart. I just want to tell you right now, when we limit God, we grieve his heart. Why? Because God has plans for you. God has dreams for you. And when we limit God, because what we're saying, what we're really saying is, I don't care what you're saying, Lord. I can't do this. And when you do not walk in the truth about who you are to yourself, others, and God, you are a slave to fear. You'll never be free as long as you allow fear into your life. Can you say amen? amen. Being free requires trusting God, trusting yourself, trusting others. Slavery binds you up, opens the door to fear, and keeps you in a place where you'll never be free until you decide you want to be free. Jeremiah 29, 11. I know y'all know this. I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans to prosper you, not to harm you. Plans to give you a hope in the future. If we'll renew our minds to God's word, like Romans 12 tells us, then we will know God's perfect will for our lives. Why? Because you're no longer thinking your thoughts, 
but you'll be thanking God thoughts. Yeah. What are God thoughts? Yeah. Ephesians chapter 3, 14. For this reason I kneel before the Father from whom every family in heaven and earth derives its name. I pray that out of his glorious riches he may strengthen you with the power through his spirit in your inner being so that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith. And I pray that you, being rooted and established in love, may have power together with all God's holy people to grasp how wide, how long, how high, how deep is the love of Christ. And to know this love that surpasses knowledge that you may be filled to the measure of all the fullness of God, now to him who is able to do immeasurably more than what we ask or imagine according to his power that is at work within us, to him be the glory in the church in Christ Jesus throughout all generations forever and ever. Amen. Amen. God thoughts beyond what I can think or imagine. Thinking like God, changing my line of thinking to, to line up with the word of God. Matthew 19, 26, with God, all things are possible. So not limiting God, freeing my mind to receive from the Lord, to receive even when it seems bigger than who I am. Stop grieving God by limiting what he can do in my life. I just want to say right now that relatives are coming into the kingdom of God. People you've been praying for for years and years and years. We call them in right now into the kingdom of God. Finances that you've been believing for. If you're a tither like we pray today, then you expect the blessing of God and supernatural provision. And I just want to encourage you, let go of limited thinking. God can move in your situation. Let go of the limits and allow the Holy Spirit to lead you and to guide you and to push through so that you can have that breakthrough in your life. Amen? I don't want to grieve God. I know you don't either. So I'm not going to limit him in 2022. He can do whatever he wants to do beyond what I can think or imagine. And if I get a negative thought, how about that building? It's beyond what I can think or imagine. And if I start thinking, well, how is this going to happen? How? I'm going to say, no, nope, no, nope, no. Nope. I captured that thought in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for our building. Thank you, Lord, that it's manifesting in the natural. Thank you, Lord, that you have a place for word of life. And we get caught up in praising God. Then we begin to loose the limits. And we begin to see with the God kind of faith what he can do yes. in our lives. Amen? Amen. 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 So your children are saved. Thank you. Your grandchildren are saved. Yes. Your nieces and nephews and aunts and uncles and brothers and sisters and all those people Thank you, Lord. that you have on your heart, yeah. you call them in yes, to the kingdom yes, in Jesus' name. Amen? Amen? The finances that we need to go forward, we call it in to the kingdom of God. In Jesus' name. Whatever it is that we need, nothing missing, nothing broken. Shalom, shalom. Amen. The peace of God. Knowing that our God, that we go boldly to his throne of grace. We go boldly to his throne. Nothing's between me and God. No sin. Can you see now why the devil uses sin? Because the devil doesn't want the blessing manifested in your life. Nor does he want you to have the kind of relationship with God that you want to have. He wants to come between you and God and have a schism to keep you separated from him. you got to make up your mind. Nothing's going to separate you from the Holy Spirit. And you go forward into the uh, throne room of God and allow the Holy Spirit to talk to you. You change where you need to change. You correct where you need to correct. You say what you need to say, and you stand bold and firm that you're going to get what God has put on your heart. Amen. Can you say amen, amen to that? Amen. Let's stand. Amen. Let's stand. God is a good God. Hallelujah. And we're going to sing, and we're going to praise God today, Hallelujah. and we're going to thank him. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you, Jesus.